In the name of Amen, the Supreme, the All Powerful, the one and only true Lord, and I'm in we trust as the Republic of Mentalite. The real 144,000 is being gathered in this day and time, the Mentalists. Men's like Ami Noon, to all of my Mentalist brothers and sisters out there, registered members of the Republic of Mentalite, and to all future Mentalists who are yet to find their way home to the Republic of Mentalite, which is Amen's community. I send greetings out to you, and I send peace out to you, and I am in a language by saying to you, Men's like Ami Noon. Good evening, I'm your host, the Intellectual Leader Mentari, and this is Mental Life Radio, and tonight we're going to be discussing uh, God and, 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 and Lord, the Lord and God. Does this world follow a judgmental God, or a, excuse me, a judgmental Lord, or a loving God? This world <clears throat> follows a loving God, but that's not a good thing. It is actually a bad thing. Good and bad are the same thing in a lot of ways, but this is actually a bad thing. The God of this world, the loving God of this world, is a demon. The loving God of this world that your families are worshiping in the Christian church, in the Islamic mosque, and in all these places where the lunar symbol is, the Israelites, I don't care who it is, all of these religions, but especially Christianity, they're pushing this loving God for people to follow, a God that's all accepting, a God that's all love. Right? This is what they push in the society, especially when they go and push, take Christianity all around the world. And the whole point of taking Christianity and Islam and all them things around the world is to push these loving gods, right? This love, they push these loving gods as accepting of everybody. But prior to that, prior to that, before the white man came over here into America, he would push God as one who judges. He would push God as one who judges in England and all these other places. And when they were doing, they, you know, they preaching of the of, of um of the Christianity, the Catholicism. They were preaching a more of a judgmental God. All right, that's what they preached before they got into America. Can y'all figure out why they changed up from a judgmental Lord, excuse me, a judgmental Lord to a loving God? Can y'all figure out why they changed up when they got into America and then they started going to the other places? Why did they go from a judgmental Lord to a loving God? Anybody know? Answer, because when they started trying to push, uh, uh, um, push religion to so-called black people, right? And other natives where they went, but especially so-called black people, in order to brainwash the young children and all the people that was coming up, they started teaching that God is love and that there's no judgment and God is love and God loves it. They started pushing that so that the people would not seek revenge against what just happened in their country, which was these missionaries came over there and took their land and killed the people and spread disease, all kind of nonsense. So, you know, just like they put the black man in slavery, you know, the so-called black man and black woman, of course, you didn't want to preach about no God of judgment to those people. Because then, that means the white man has to be judged for enslaving the so-called black people. So if you say that, oh, God is a judgmental God and you're going to be judged for your wicked ways and your evil ways, then that means you have the right to put the white man to death right then on the spot. You had the right or by judgment of the Lord to put the white man to death on the spot for putting you in slavery, for raping your woman. You had the right to put him to death on the spot. If you were in alignment with a judgmental Lord, because you're being judged by your ways. And if your wages are to enslave people, kidnap people, rape people, molest children, all this other stuff, then guess what? That judgment, that, that, that judgment that is wicked. As they say, it's wicked. So if it's wicked, that means that all wicked things must be destroyed. That means the people as well. They must be destroyed. You see, didn't the white man, the white, hell, the white man, did he not set up his, did he not set up his court system behind that? He set up his court system behind judgment, didn't he? And he played the role of God as the judge, correct? <coughs> and he decided whether you were set free or did you went to jail for the rest of your life. Is that not right? 
He didn't say when you came in the courtroom, oh, I love you and, you know, God is love. Because they say in God they trust in the courtroom. So then in God they trust and God is all love and God accepts things and forgives. Why the judge don't? Why don't the judge forgive? Why don't the judge let murderers go? Why the judge don't let thieves go? Why don't they do that? But then they say in God we trust and they say, God, if they're supposed to be following the way of a loving God, that they push in a society, then wouldn't the judge be merciful? Wouldn't he let go of an understanding of killing, give them a second chance? Why would they put killers to death, give them death, um, the death uh, um, uh, lethal injection laws in Texas like they do? Why would they do that? That's not the act of a person who believes in a loving God. Now, is, is that the act that, that they judge in the society, right? Hell, they even prejudge, a.k.a. prejudice. They even have prejudice in the society, Right? The white man teaches a loving God, right? But he's prejudiced against you. He prejudges you. So, again, that prejudice or that prejudgment is what they get because that's in alignment with the true Lord. Judgment is in alignment with the real Lord, the true creator, the true power, the homage. That's who judgment is in alignment with, the true Lord. And they put their system in alignment with judgment. They put their system in alignment with judgment, but then they teach you about a loving God, which they don't even believe in when it comes to justice. But let me tell you the loving God that they really push to you. And they want, you know, they want to do away with the uh, judgmental Lord because even the Israelites, you know, going back to the Israelite teaching, was not their thing all about judgment? Wasn't they thing all about judgment, the judgment of the Lord? Even to this day, you hear the Israelites talking about the judgment of the Lord, the judgment, the judgment, the judgment. But then you hear the white man push it, oh, God is all love. There's no judgment. Then the white man even go as far as to have you so-called black people don't judge, don't make no judgment, don't be judgmental. They'll tell you to be that way. But that's not how they are. That's not how they are. They prejudge you before they even uh, know who the hell you are. They tell you to be one way, but they another way. But let me tell you, since they replaced the uh, a judgmental Lord with a loving God, who is the loving God that they preach in when they tell you come as you are in the Christian church? And you, it don't matter if you're gay or straight. You could come and God love everybody. The God that they push in. That don't sound like the judgmental Lord, because the judgmental Lord judges homosexuals as wrong, judges lesbians as wrong, judges all off behavior as wrong, unnatural. So what God are they pushing in replacement of the judgmental Lord? That God's name is Pan. That's Pan, right? And Pan is another way of saying Lucifer. Satan, right? All in one. That's Pan. Pan is the god of the three-dimensional world. Pan is really who they worship in the black cat, black Christian church and the Catholic church. Pan is who they worship. Pan is what they worship. And there, and the Catholic church and the Christian church, and now making its way into Islam and Judaism, the god of all of those religions is Pan. Pan is loving. Pan is a loving God. Pan is an accepting God. Pan accepts homosexuals. Pan accepts lesbians. Pan accepts child molesters. Pan accepts uh, a bestiality. Pan accepts the thugs and the gangsters and the hood niggas and the dope dealers and the hoes and the sluts. Pan accepts and loves all of them. They're all Pan's children. That's the God of this world. That is really what these niggas mean in their church when they talk about God loves everybody. They're not talking about the most high or the most continuous. They're talking about Pan. They're talking about the God Pan, paganistic God from the Greek Roman mythology, Pan. Which is where you get the word pansexual from, where the word Peter Pan comes from, the cartoon Peter Pan. Because Peter Pan uh, and Geppetto, that was a pedophil pedophilia uh, uh, relationship. Peter Pan was a uh, was a um was a little boy, wooden boy who was being molested by the old man. That's really what the relationship was. He made a little boy that he could molest. 
pansexuals, pedophiles, all that's part of the God pain of this world. Okay? That's what you worship here when they say God is all love. The love equals acceptance. Love is another way of saying acceptance. We, so how you ever heard these niggas now say it's all love? You ever heard these niggas say it's all love? Right? Why do you think they say that? You, don't you hear P. Diddy, the nigga Puffy, and he said, uh, love. Everything, now his name is Brother Love. Why do you think they keep pushing that whole love spirit? Love is acceptance. That's just another cold word for acceptance amongst the Illuminati and those illuminated ones, those ones who are Luciferians and Satanists. They, and they got this whole love, a.k.a. acceptance thing. Right? Because when you push in a God of love, then anything goes. When you push a God of love, anything goes. Homosexuality goes. Lesbianism goes. Uh, uh, pedophilia goes. Bestiality goes. Pansexual, all pansexuality. All that goes. And that's what they're pushing in the society. That's what they're really pushing. They're pushing a God that is opposite of the Lord. They're pushing a God that is opposite of the Lord, a three-dimensional God, a false God. All the gods of this world, whether they're being called Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh, all those gods are moon gods. They're all lunar gods. Jesus Christ, all those are moon gods. Right? You worship in the image of a beast, half man, half animal. Half man, half animal. Half man, half animal. The image of Christ is a beast man. Half man, half animal. That's why he got the hair all down and whatnot, looking like a goat. The uh, uh, beard all over his face, looking like a goat. The long hair. You see? That's the pan image. I told you the Greek to Jesus Christ image is nothing but pan. That's pan. All that Christ image stuff and all that stuff in Christ and the story of Christ and all, all that's all that's nothing but pansexuality. You see, that's all that is. These are nothing but made up pagan gods that you worship. One that's all love, love. You see. Pan you and you so called notice they got you niggas calling yourself pan Africans. Notice they got you calling yourself Pan-African. But why do they call you Pan-African? Because really, the gods you niggas worship in uh, on that um, so-called African stuff is really Pan-gods pan or pansexual demons. You really worship in a lot of those African um, um, religions, they got you worshiping pansexual demons. You see, that's why when you get in the church, they got the old woman falling all on the floor. A lot of y'all that pan-African thing going in the church, falling on the floor, uh, foaming at the mouth and whatnot. That's why you see all kind of freakiness going on in the damn church. That's why it's no thing for you to have homosexuals in the church, lesbians in the church, plots in the church, a reverend screwing, uh, screwing everybody, all the women and, and, and some of the boys in the church. That's no thing because, again... They accept and have love for all of those things. They believe that the God that they worship, Jesus Christ, accepts all that. But the Christ that they're talking about is Pan. The, the, the one who they're talking about who accepts all freaks, all weirdos, all unnatural things is Pan. You see, this is what they do. These people are straight demonic. And they're straight demented. These people come into the church, they got all kinds of problems. They bugged out of their mind. Right? And those are the ones they welcome in. Aren't they the ones they welcome in? They come in here, you a sinner, come in here and you a sinner, but never do nothing to stop sinning. Come in and, and if you a sinner, come in and, and change your way. But they never change their ways. They never stop so-called sinning. There's never no judgment. There's never no, oh, you know, I need to stop doing this or else. There's no, I need to stop doing this or else. I could just keep doing it until I don't feel like doing it no more. Because God understands, or if I, if I want to stop at all. 
shoot. You got you what what you know, again, that's how you know it was a time where they, they would have said, Oh, God frowns upon homosexuality. So how do God frown upon homosexuality thirty, forty years ago? But now God love everybody. Even the homosexuals. The, the homosexuals could go to church and have and, and God could love them because he made them that way. What what changed all that? The answer the white man changed all that. He changed all that. Because he was really trying to push that to you all. Because that's really what he wants in your churches. He wants you to be pansexuals. He wants you to full-on worship pan. You so-called black people. To full-on worship pan. A.K.A. Christ. Right? That's really, they pushing that on you. That loving God. I told you the mindset when they first started pushing it was they basically did it to keep you off their ass because of all the stuff they was doing to you because had you had that in your mind when y'all was going through y'all was going through slavery and y'all was just like, yo, you know what? God love everybody. Expect that God love everybody spell was put on black people, especially during the civil rights thing with Martin Luther for Coon. Right? They put that God love everybody spell on everybody. You see? Exactly. That right there, them rabbis and all them imams, they love them some little boys. They pop some little boys and whatnot. So that goes to tell you that their God that they worship is pain. They don't, they Allah, they Jehovah, all that, yah, yah, all that, whatever. It's pain. It's pain. It is pain. That's who they worship. That's who they follow. You see, that's who they in alignment with. That's who the black church is in alignment with. That's why if you speak out, a lot of you black reverends, you know, if you speak out against homosexuality in your church, even though it says clearly in the Bible that for a man to lay with another man is a sin and an abomination and, and, and they should be put to death according to the scriptures. Why? I'm not saying put nobody to death or kill anybody for being gay. But what I am saying is they supposed to be put out the church if they like that. But if you do that, then they'll take your 501c3 charter. And you can't teach that being gay is wrong in the sight of God. Why? Because the God they're pushing in the sight of the God they're pushing is not wrong. Because the God is pain. The God is pain. And your high up reverends and all these other people that's linked and they know that. They already know. They in the know. They know the God that they pushing, the Jesus they pushing is pain. They know that. They don't believe in all that Jesus stuff. You know how you know that? I told you about how 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 T D Jakes let Tyler Perry come into his damn church and put his hands on him and, and he fell back. How he like I said, he let a damn homosexual put put and lay hands on him. A faggot lay hands on him. I already know this broadcast ain't gonna be on um it ain't gonna be on um they might well put this straight in Patreon. This gonna be one of the raw and uncut. He let a faggot put his hands on him and he fell back. So already what when they showed you that here it is, you, here it is, you're supposed to be a man of God, but then you let a faggot who's not a man of God put hands on you and whatnot, and you, lay, you, you fall back. So what that really was showing was that you love Tyler Perry, that y'all have love, because he, 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 he was okay, but he is a high priest, probably a pan. That's why he came and did that to you. You see? He is a priest of pan. That's why he did that to you. That's why you had no problem with him. Then he gave you a million dollars after Nigga, they all pan, they all in that pansexuality, man. You see, they ain't no judgment. They all with that, and that's fine. Cause see, all this is gonna come out in these last days. It's all gonna come out because the side is being chosen. Those who are gonna be with the Most High with Amen, and those who are gonna be with the Beast, man. And them niggas already chose they spot with the Beast, man. They already chose they spot. They already in alignment with the Beast, man. A lot of, and a lot of these so-called black liberated teams, they they in alignment with the beast too, man. They with it. All these so-called black cis stars who claim they they with the mother goddess stuff and all the mother goddess talk and all this other crap. They pansexuals too, man. They they don't believe in no mother goddess, man. They don't. All that mother goddess is a bunch of bull. It's BS. They they worship pan, man. The nigga went the nigga woman worship pan, man. The so-called black woman worship pain. And the nigga man, he worship pain too. The thug, the gang, them niggas ain't worshiping. That Christ, Christ is pain. Okay? 
He, he, you can be whatever you want uh, in the name of Jesus. Now, am I saying all the so-called black people know about that? No, they don't. Some of them try to bypass and go to God. They want to go to the real most high and whatnot beyond the church. But when you, as soon as you go in that church, you get sucked in and whatnot. It's a rap on that. You going you, you gonna get, you gonna get panned out. And, and what God, Pan is the God of music. Pan is one of the gods of music. What do they always do as soon as you come into church? With the goddamn reverend got the music going right on, right? They, that's the charm. The music come right on. What's the biggest staple of the so-called black church? The goddamn choir and the, and, the, and the singing and the music. That's why you niggas really go to church. Y'all, they, 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 like I said, they, 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 their god is Pan. Pan caters to all of their demonic and, and sick ways. Pan is okay with that. That's why they got that God, my God, don't judge. Yeah, these niggas, my God, don't judge. My God against your enemy. Their God is Pan. Because Pan is cool with everything, no matter what you do. God is all love. Pan is all love. It's all good. Do as thy will. Alistair Crowley. All that's the same stuff, man. That's all it is. And you know what? But you know, again, I'm just putting our people up on that on what that really is, what they follow and whatnot, so they'll wake up. But the worst of you so-called black people that's with it, hey man, be with, be down, man. You Negroes, be down. And stay stay with the beast, man. Y'all already marked the way. So y'all might get mad. Y'all hear this? Oh, what are you saying and whatnot? Y'all y'all with it already. A lot of y'all with it already. The liberated black woman is she, her, her opinion is God, aka pain. And basically, because the God that she follows, whether she want to call it Mother Nature, whether she want to call it uh, 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 Energy, or whether she want to call it the Mother Goddess, all that, man, at the end of the day, it's all pain. It's pain. They can create these little altars in their heads, these little altars to these false gods and goddesses and whatnot. But in, in all reality, the ability to do it is pain. When they calling on God, if something happens, oh my God, oh my, oh Lord, oh my God, oh my God, that's pain they talking to. God save me, oh God help me, oh God, oh my God, that's pain they talking to. Because they know not, they don't want the God of judgment. Every time they get you to say, oh don't judge. Don't judge, oh, don't judge me. They're really getting you to accept non-judgment. So therefore, in accepting non-judgment, you, ex you reject the real Lord. Because the real Lord is about judgment, man. The real Lord is about judgment. The judgmental. You see? The real Lord is about judgmental, judging the mind of our people, man. Seeing if we receive this transmission from the Most High to raise ourselves up as the Most High. That's what the Lord is putting to us. The Amen, the Omni are sending to us as the elect, man. So that we don't take part in the ways of the beast here. We don't take part in his pan, his pansexualism, his panism, his pan worship. You see? That's all that's being pushed here is pan worship. I don't care what God you believe in in this society, it's pan. You see? It's pan. And that's why I said they accept anything in me. They accept anything. You already know the Catholic churches, they, they worship pan because, again, you could be in the Catholic church and whatnot. You could be a killer. You could be a gangster. All that stuff you can in the mob is all linked up to that. They don't kill and just sell dope and all that, but then they come out, they take their Catholic. So obviously they got a, they have to have a God that's cool with all the all the demonic shit they do. They got to have a God that's cool with that, and that God is pain. God is pain. They got to have it in their mind, and the white man got to have it in his mind that a God would be okay with them owning people and whipping people and enslaving people and raping women and raping little boys and whatnot. What the hell kind of God is that? They taught you about a God that forgives and a God that is loving and a God that put them in power over you. So what God is that? That's the God that, I, that let me do whatever I want. That's the God they always worship. They don't worship no God of judgment. The white man does not worship a God of judgment. And he does not want you to be in alignment with a God of judgment because then that means he's going to be judged and he's going to be put to death for all the things he's done. They don't want that. 
They never wanted that. Like I said, that's why they could talk about they good Christians and all that. Well, it means they owning people and whipping people and raping women, raping little boys and popping little boys and, little, and, and raping men. But, oh, they good Christians. They go to church on Sunday and they talk about God. They, but what God are they talking about? Because if you ever don't add up, you'd be like, well, how do these people worship God and say they love God? And the most, and the, and is it the same God? They don't do all this devilishment and whatnot. They do it because, again, I tell you, the God they always worship was pan. Pan, sexual, they, and the, pan, the people that follow the God pan, they do as they want to do. They do as I will because they believe that they own God. They do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want, demonic or whatever. They open vessels for that. They open vessels for demonic energy. That God Pan puts them as open vessels for demonic energy. They have no morals. They have no morals. They are mentally and morally bankrupt people, and they follow a God who's cool with that. They follow a God that is okay with that called Pan. You see? That's who they follow. And that's who a lot of you so-called black people follow as well. Because if you so-called black people are engaging in any of these things, homosexuality, lesbianism, lip, uh, 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 race mixing, uh, 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 black, uh, black liberated shit stars, all that liberated crap, or you worshiping a mother goddess, all that, then y'all pansexuals, man. Y'all worship the god pan, man. All oh, that's nothing but offshoots of pan, man. You know, that, that pan that basically lets you do whatever you want to do without any consequences. That's the energy that's being pushed here. But the white man don't run his court system like that. He don't run his court system like that. And his court system, his law, and his order is how he governs society. See, how he governs society is really how God is. How he governs society is really how God is or the most high the Lord really is. Going back into the ancient world, we knew God or the most high, excuse me, the Lord, the creator. We knew the Lord as one who judges. That's how we knew the Lord. We knew that if we did something wrong or something bad, that we would be judged for that. We already knew that. There was judgment for that. In this three-dimensional realm, there was judgment. And this is why back in the ancient days, they would come to, um, in ancient Egypt, they would, they would go to the priest of Amun because that whole priest setup that they got in the church come from the priest of Amun back in the ancient world. The whole confession, how you go to the Catholic church and you confess, they used to do that back in ancient Egypt. There ain't nothing new here. Ain't nothing new coming from the three-dimensional realm, I should say. Everything is next from the fourth dimension. But as far as in the three-dimensional realm, ain't nothing new. That come that Catholic church going and confessing, that go back to ancient Egypt, man. People would meet with their priest of Amun or whatever, and uh, the priest of Amun, and they would confess. That they do a negative confession. I have not done this. I have not done that. I have not stolen. I have not lied. I have not. They would confess what they have and haven't done and wait for the judgment of the priest. What would the judgment, what would the priest say? Because the priest is supposed to be the receiver and the uh, 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 mediator between uh, God or the Most High, or Amen, and the people. Because they say, oh, you know, how can a man be the mediator? Because again, certain men are receivers of higher transmission and they interpret things coming directly from the Most High. So that judgment was one of the things that was interpreted and thus became law and order. And that's how law and order came about, you see, from a higher principality, which was Amen. However, when it got into Greece, when it got into Greece, when the white man was over there greasing each other up in Greece, when they got over there, all that went out the window. You see, all that, all the, all that went out the window, and it was all about hedonism. It was all about hedonism and paganism, and being a damn freak. And so, of course, they're gonna raise a god up that's okay with that. They're gonna raise up a god that's okay with that. They don't want no judgment, judgmental God. You know, the white man, he don't want to be told he's going to have to pay for anything or he's going to have to pay for his wrongdoing. He don't want to hear that. So they have to promote a loving God. You see? But these people are not loving at all. They are the most vengeful people. If you do something to white people, they'd be ready to do something right back to you. They're coming back at you. So again, they don't believe in that God is love. They only tell you niggas to believe that so that you won't tear them a new ass. Back in slavery, this is, this is how this was to ensure that they wouldn't wake up with their heads cut off. 
or they babies drown, or whatever you chose to do or rape they women. You see? That's how they made sure that not so much for the brutality, but mainly for the God is love. God, you know, God has a greater plan for us. Love your master. Love, love your master. Love the people that's beating the hell out you and owning you and raping you. Love them anyway. They don't know what they do. You're supposed to love them. You see, you ain't supposed to judge them because if you judge them, you're going to go ahead and put them to death. They sick. They mentally ill. They dangerous. So they must be put to death. That was supposed to be the dust set of judgment of the Lord. That was the judgment of the Lord. When you start impeding on other people's livelihood and their life and whatnot and talking about you got the right to own people and you start talking about you want to force your will, you sick. You off. Something wrong with you. You got to be put to death. You insane. But because you start pushing that whole God is love, oh, well, we just got to love our enemies and turn the other cheek and all that BS. You see? All that insanity. That's how you allowed insanity to be amongst you and, and live amongst you. You see? That's how you allow insanity to be amongst you. And it's still amongst you today. That insanity is still amongst you today. What happened to stupid niggas when that white boy came in there, Dylan Roof, and shot all them dumb niggas up? And they was like, oh, well, we forgive you. We, we, we ain't mad. We forgive you. Or that coon, the nigga who, who got his who brother got shot by the white woman, the police. Uh, we we still love you, cause they under that 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 pan spirit. They under that pan spirit. That's why. That's why they forgive, cause they under that pan spirit. Pan is their pan is their god. You see, pan forgive everything. Pan accepts everything. There's no judgment with pan. You see, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, 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 there's everything is all love. You see, but that, no, it's not even that, that. That's the God that's preached. That the God is preached by the beast to the niggas is love. The God love. The God pan. That's the that's the God that's preached. That's uh, uh, preached. That's the God that they preach. The God of love. Everything is love. It's all love. You see? That's how they get you so-called black women to mix your seed, commit bestiality with the white man. And mix your seed with them. That's how they get you to do that. When you're, you can't help who you love. You notice they keep going throwing love in it. You can't help who you love. So I'm going to commit bestiality. Because right? you can't help who you love. That's that God is love. That's all that is. That's that pain. That's that pain. You see? That's that pain. And like I said, a lot of you so-called black people, it, it, you know, they, until they figure out, because they'll say, oh, you know, we got to get our people off the white Jesus, and then we got to get our people on some Oshun, on Ogun and oh, some Oshun. Man, look, that's all pain too, man. That's pain too. You know, you know when you know it's not, I'm going to tell you when you know it's the real, the most high, the real Lord, the creator, the most high, the Amen. You know it's Amen when you, you, you only going to see a few people that's following Amen. An elect or a chosen few. Because, see, the mass majority of the world ain't going to want to follow Amen. Because they, they, they got to be forced, they would have to be forced to follow Amen, as in law enforcement. You, you get what I'm saying? They would have to be forced to follow Amin as, for, as, a, as in law enforcement. You would have to force them to follow Amin. And just to force them, it would be just to keep the law so that they wouldn't be doing everything they're doing, murdering, killing, all in the street and doing what they're doing. So you would have to literally force them to follow. They wouldn't follow Amin. They want to follow a God who is all love. And all accepting of everything. You, it, it, hey, if, if, if you molest a little kid, you know, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. They'll tell you ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, they, they you know, God, it, it, they, it was this one church that what's the name of them grew up in. It was um, uh, the River Phoenix in them and River Phoenix, the actor, Jaquan Phoenix, Jaquin Phoenix and, uh, uh, them, and uh, the other chick, I forgot who she was at. They grew up in this church where they was teaching, this was going on for years, that it's okay for grown up people to have sex with children. You see, they was teaching that. 
I forget what the name of this church was, but it's still going. Now, why did white men ain't shut them down? Answer, because they on board with all that type of stuff. I told you the God that they, they push in this world is the God of love. You see? Forget them commandments. They don't, they don't care about no goddamn commandments. You see, the white man don't care about no commandments. He cares. God is love. I can do whatever I want to do, but for you niggas, y'all can't do what y'all want to do. Y'all ain't up on the same God. The God I'm talking about is pan. I do what I want to do, a.k.a. the white man. And for you Negroes, you know what I'm saying? The, no, no, no. The white man, he does, he, he, he does pan when he wants to do whatever he wants. But then he'll flip it, and if he's come time to judge you, he'll put you to death. So he'll do it in the dualistic way. But he wants you to just be all love and panned out. You see, he want to be panned, he with the God pan, when he want to get his freak on and do whatever he want to do and do, do whatever. And, but then when it came time to judge you or whatnot, he'll put you to death. You see? So he had, so he had, he had a split mindset when it came to judgment. He had a, the man had a split mindset. Because over here, where he claimed that God is love and, and, and he worships God and he believes in God, God says forgive. But then over here, he, read, he, he wants vengeance. He wants vengeance. That don't even make sense. You see? That don't make sense. That don't go in alignment with what he teaches. But like I said, you so-called black people in the church, y'all follow pain. Jesus is pain. And he is used as a uh, uh, a way to promote these spiritual philosophies. You see, he's used as a way to promote these spiritual philosophies. Even if you say you don't know who Pan is, it don't matter. You don't have to know. You carry the spirit of Pan. A lot of you so-called black people, you carry the spirit of Pan because you actually believe that you can do whatever you want in the world and there's no judgment and that only God can judge me or uh, which you really don't believe. You know what I'm saying? Or only God could judge me or God is okay if I'm gay and there's no wrong with that or there's nothing wrong with me uh, 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 um, mixing with the other races and all this other stuff. You think there's nothing wrong with all that. Because, again, you were taught to have, follow the God of love. The love God. We all the same. We love everybody. But that's not the reality of it. That's not reality. And the only reason they tell you that is because cause the white man stay prejudging you. I don't care who it is. And they only tell you all is love is because they don't want you to judge them. They don't want you to look at them. See, because when you're looking at people with judgmental eyes, it's much different than you're looking at them with loving eyes. When you're looking at people with judgmental eyes, you're more, um, what's the word I want to say? You're more zeroed in. You're more focused. You're actually literally looking into these people and you are weighing them mentally in your head. You ain't looking with no loving type of, you know, how they, how they say you ain't looking at them through rose-colored glasses. You see, you ain't looking at them through rose-colored glass. Remember that old saying, don't look at me through rose-colored glass, meaning you ain't looking at them to be what you want them to be. You looking, for, you looking to them for what they actually are. You seeing them for what they actually are. That's judgment. They don't want you judging them because if you actually looked at the so-called white man, all these rest of these races out here, you'll see them for just what they are. A bunch of parasites. People with animal fur. Mixed breeds, miscreants, degenerates, recessive. You would see them if you were judging them as to what they really were instead of judging them as, oh, this loving person who you love everybody and don't judge and I love everybody. Then you'd be like, oh, well, no, don't say that about them. Don't be like that. But they got no problem thinking that about you. And if you get them, get them, get them, push them to a certain edge, they'll straight up tell you, nigga, you monkey, you black bastard. They'll call you, let, let them get a few Budweiser in them. They're going, to, they're going to show you just what they really think of you. You understand? All you black females who are laying with a white man and whatnot, you got babies by him. He'll show you, let them get mad, get a few Budweiser in them or, or whatever, and he'll call you a black nigga bitch and everything. You see? It'll come right out of you. It'll come out. You see? Because that's reality. 
They don't want you seeing them as they really are. They want you to see them through rose-colored glasses, through loving eyes. That's why they gave you the image of Jesus as a white man. They gave you the image of Jesus as a white man so that you would forever see white people in this uh, 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 loving, uh, 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 worshipful way. That's why they did that. That's why Jesus had to be a white man. So it would keep you off their ass and, and, and keep you from seeing them as somebody who can die just like you can die. So you wouldn't be so willing to sacrifice or give up your life because you're scared of them. You'd be more willing to take their lives if they stood in your way. But you can't do that because they had to work on, work on your mind, work on your brain. Oh, that's not right. What would Jesus say? You know, uh, they, don't do that. Don't hurt them. Forgive them. And while you forgiving them and, and forgiving them for what they did, they turn around and be ready to blow your brains out or cut your head off or do whatever they want to you. You see? You'll take it easy on them, but they ready to take your head all the way off. You see? That's the mentality that was pushed on you. That's the mentality that's on you right now. Plus you so-called black women. Here it is. Here it is. Somebody, you really could tell me a so-called black woman would even think about laying with a white man or any other race of man, but especially the white man who is known historically for raping you black women in slavery and treating y'all like shit. But you, but see, through love, the God love, a.k.a. Pan, it's, it's, you know, everything is, oh, Tom didn't do that. Brad didn't do that. Why are you going back? Why are you thinking about Todd and Brad didn't do that? Jim, uh, 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 Chester didn't do that. Just his forefathers did. Or if not his forefathers, the people that he came when he came into the society, he came into alignment with the people. So if you come into the society as a white man, then you in alignment with the people that did that in the past. That means you came into alignment with the. I don't give a shit if you got here yesterday. Once you come over here as a white man, you in alignment with those people who did what they did. That's the real judgment. You with them. You see that? All that uh, well, his people didn't own slaves. and Oh, they don't feel that way. And this and the third. I don't care about that. You see? Once they come here and they white, they all the same. You see? But because you dumb niggas with this whole, it's all love. And we love. <laughs> it's all love. You know what I'm saying? That's a bunch of BS, man. They get over here, they get right with they white people. Oh, we, we, we didn't do it. Well, my people wasn't here doing We didn't own slaves, so what? You white. You all, in the, you all in alignment together. You ain't giving up your whiteness. And you know what you had to do. You know what had to go down for your whiteness to mean something in this society, right? And you ain't willing to give that up. So that means y'all all together. You see? Y'all better wake up, man. You see? All that love garbage. Especially you nigga men who love the white woman. You niggas really, y'all really some cool sambos. Y'all part of that whole love thing too, man. You love them over your own woman. A lot of you guys are Uncle Tom's, man. Especially you Israelites. Yeah, you niggas are talk bad about the white man in one breath, then you niggas turn around and talk about, oh yeah, but with that white, that white vanilla goddess, you niggas need your asses whooped with a damn, uh, uh, with a damn horse whip. You niggas talk, the white man is the devil, and he's going down, when the ships come back, he's going into bondage, but that white vanilla goddess, she, you know, and, and the nigga, the hell with the nigga woman, the white vanilla god, man, you niggas are, you niggas are off like hell, y'all, y'all crazy, y'all, man, that's that pan god, that's pan. You niggas don't think you worship Pan, but you do. You Israelites worship Pan. You don't worship no Most High. You don't even know what your Most yeah Yahweh Shah. That's a made up name, man. That name don't mean like Yahweh Ha 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 Who. Man, that's a made up name, man. You guys worship Pan, man. And you guys ain't about the law, man. You guys are not about the law, man. So if you ain't about the Lord, then how the hell are you going to be about the order? Because I heard one of you guys say the stupidest things I ever heard. Come on, oh, it's satanic to be a police officer. What do you mean? So you mean to say if there were no police officers, and let's just say the, 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 all the white men, everybody was going, there should be no police? Are you serious? 
You're supposed to be a people of law and order. Of course, the first thing you're going to think about if, if you're a man of law and order is, yeah, they got to, if the white man ain't here no more, somebody got to police this thing. Yeah, you damn right they got to be police. They got to be jails. They got to be court systems. You damn right. But see, under you love niggas, you want all that to go away and you and, 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 and let chaos and confusion rule. Because that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. See, in the system of love, there's no rules, there's no law, there's no order in the system of love. You see, under the God love, a.k.a. Pan. Nah, I'll be right back. Whether you see the so-called black women in the church dancing, like, <clears throat> you see them when they, when they do the choir, they start the choir, and they start all the dancing in the church and all this other stuff, or... You know, just the whole, you know, real, like I said, everything is driven in the church by music. Everything is driven by music. That's Pan. That's Pan. There was no, uh, uh, there was no, uh, um, no singing like that when people gathered, you know, in places where, you know, because that, because really the whole set up of the church thing was really a thing where people gathered together on a certain set day in the ancient world to speak on or, you know, um, gather and speak on the most high, the most continuous and whatnot and receive and things like that as a, com as co uh, collective to raise up the most high. And that, that was what church became over time and the gathering in churches and things like that. That, you know, we did that in the ancient world. We gathered together and whatnot, and there was chanting done. What well, you see in the ancient world, you know, the people, oh, well, basically what you hear, the, the, they hear the Asians doing and the, the chanting the booze. They would have their uh, um, chant, and there would be low tones and things like that, and, you know, um, syncopated sound or syncopated frequency going out to open up something that opened up into the open or the outer dimensions. There would be syncopated sounds that sounded more like chanting and whatnot. It wasn't like no singing, like what you see these niggas doing today in the church, putting on a damn show, like a, like a damn Broadway R&B play or a show or something like that. No, it was meant to be something sacred. When the men and the women chanted in certain tones and frequencies and whatnot, in certain uh, uh, low wind instruments might have been played or... Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 a string bass or something like that, like not a bass, but you know, like a to make that deep vibration or or you know something like that. Something might have been or or might have been a, a um, horn or something like that to you know chant in and bring in certain uh, open up certain doors and energy and whatnot as a collective body. That became what you see in the church today when it became a big goddamn love fest. A pan fest because what I say, pan was the god of music, and again, what draws people to the church? Music and the black church they drawn by music. You see, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church, believe it or not, if you look at how they conduct their services and when you hear the, the singing, it's almost in alignment with the way the ancient Kemites and the ancient Nubians did, even though it's more soul in it. But it was, it's almost in alignment with that. You know, the low moan, oh, and how they be doing it. Uh, that, it's almost in alignment with what we did in the ancient world, but you know it had to be more soul to it than that when we did it. You know, it sounds dead when they do it, but that's more or less how you were making a connection and opening a door to the fourth dimension, even though they ain't opening up nothing, but that's how it was done. It turned into a big coon sambo show once the God of Love and got introduced and all the love and no judgment and things like that once that got introduced you see that got introduced that's when the damn searches came you see that exactly church I, mean, I, 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 don't, I don't doubt that it means searches because that's what it, that's what it ends up being when you go in there the nigga women with the big hats on and men with their suits or everybody trying to you trying to mack and pimp and you know the women trying to party it's just a big party you see, they getting together to my oh, we, we God is a loving God. You see, the Lord's a loving Lord with a damn wig on our head, a blonde wig on our head, trying to look like a white woman. So you already showed the God that you love. 
the God you worship, the white woman. And like I said, a lot of you so-called black women who into this spirituality talk, you into this spirituality talk, you into this uh, um, this goddess goddess talk, this mother goddess, mother sister witch talk, which is nothing but witchcraft. That's all witchcraft. That's nothing but y'all venerating and raising up um, pan. That's all. That's all. All that. That's all that pan. That panistic nonsense, man. That's all that partying and 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 and, and BSing and and dancing all over the place and everything. That's all that is. That's panism. You know, pantomime. That's all that is. And that pantomime is the thing to do where they had the um, the uh, person who had the white face on and they wouldn't say nothing. They were just acting out certain things. Which is where your actors come from. Which is all based in panism. All that acting and all that, all that you know, all that's based in panism. Now, am I saying there's anything wrong with acting or singing? Well, no. But I'm just saying that the system that is under, currently under the beast, that's what it is. All that's done through the permission of pan. And it's all done to pull people into that panistic mind frame. That God is love. All is love. Everything is acceptance. You know, love everybody. You know, God is all love. And again, that appeals to a lot of you so-called black women. That appeals to a lot of you so-called black women. When it comes to this, my idea about the world, you love to believe that, every, you know, uh, uh, all I got to do is be a good, loving person. And, you know, my family will be OK. I'll be all right. Everything. I just got to love everybody because God is love and whatnot. And you so-called black women, you love that goddamn God is love message, man. You love that message. It's a load of BS. That's why you accept anything. That's why you teach your children not to judge and to love everybody, not to judge. This is why your daughters end up marrying the wrong type of men, getting their ass beat by men. You making the wrong choices because everything is love. You mixing your seed with the beast and all these other wrong males and whatnot. This is why because God is love and love is love. Love is love. Acceptance. That's why it's okay for your daughter to come home 15, 16 years old until she's pregnant. Or she a lesbian. Cause, man, you still love her anyway. Because love is love. You see? God still love her. Right? That, that's what y'all teach. You don't want to teach the harsh reality. That she's under judgment and she broke the law and the order of the Most High. That we ain't supposed to participate in that stuff. We ain't supposed to be about that. But she chose the God of love. A.K.A. the God of acceptance. And that's really what, like I said, all you so-called black women trying to get all deep and heavy with your, with your uh, uh, orishas and your, and your candles and your spiritual talk and all of your, I don't believe in no God, I'm about the energy and all that bull crap y'all talk. Like I said, y'all nothing but a bunch of pansexuals and y'all a bunch of, y'all, well, if y'all not doing the pansexuality, y'all follow the God pan. That's really why y'all think the way y'all think. All that so-called fake free nonsense and whatnot, where you ain't you ain't got you ain't got to uh, answer for none of your judgment and all this other stuff, and you know God is love or, or there is no God. That's all pan, because pan basically allows you to do whatever you want, say whatever you want, think however you want to think, believe whatever you want to believe. That's pan. There are no laws and no rules to this, because even in thinking. Even in thinking, there's supposed to be law and order and judgment. In thinking and loving and all of these things that you're calling that, there's supposed to be judgment involved. You're supposed to judge and uh, judge who you love. Think about uh, and think about and, and judge your thoughts. It ain't just no, oh, I love everybody. You know, don't work like that. Love is love. That ain't, the, that ain't what, that's not what it is. Love is the key. Jesus is the key. Christ was love. You see, watch, watch when you, watch out for all of those, watch out for all those catchphrases out here in the world. Because when these Christians are saying Christ is love, like I said, the ones that's higher up, they really mean pan is love. You see, how can these people realistically say, 
how, and again, go back to the Catholic Church. Like I said, even though they chant, a lot of them, they chant is somewhat right. They still worship Pan, too. Because how can you, right, you know, how can you sit up here and say that a God that you believe in a judge, a ju- a, you say they believe in a just and loving God. In other words, you believe in a God that accepts your degenerate ways. That's the God you choose to believe in, which is Pan. That's why you can molest boys or run a system of child molestation for years and then you don't think that you're going to be judged for that. You don't think you're going to be judged and punished for that, running a system of child molestation. Or at least allowing a, 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 a long line of child molestation to go on in your, in your, in your, in your belief system. Where people are being scarred. You don't think there's no judgment for that. Yet you still teach that God is love. And I'm sure they taught the little boys that when they were touching the little boys. But this is the society. Do as thy will. God is love. And like I said, you so-called black women, y'all with it. You are with it. You want just practicing the witchcraft, the orisha, the spirituality, the burning the candles. You are, uh, you are Luciferians. You are Satanists and you follow the God Pan. You follow the God Pan. That's really your trinity right there. That's really your unholy trinity right there. Lucifer, Pan, and Satan. That's your goddamn holy trinity right there. Lucifer, Pan, and Satan. That's your goddamn holy trinity right there. Right there. And you black females, you follow the holy trinity. You follow the holy uh, trinity of a loving God that lets you do, do you. Do what thy will. Do what y'all want that nigga Russell do you. You black males, you follow that too, man. You black males, you follow that do as thou wilt mindset too. Yo, I'm doing me, son. Now you remember you niggas have to say I'm doing me. Yeah, do as thou wilt. The black man is God. What God? What God? Oh, that's right. Pan. Pan. That's what you black men are. You your black man is pan. Because you learn how to be pan from the white man. That's why a lot of you black men who talk that shit, you degenerates, man. A lot of you guys are degenerates, man. You see? A lot of you niggas, y'all don't think nothing about, you don't think nothing about sleeping with your homeboy girl. Your girl don't think nothing about sleeping with your homeboy. She don't think nothing about cheating on you or being a slut. Or whoring herself because that's what they teach you in that free your mind, a uh, mindset of be free and whatnot. That's nothing but panism, man. All that free and being free. That means being free of judgment. In other words, I don't give a f. I don't give a fuck. That's 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 pan. Well, I do whatever I want to do. That's what that is. No law, no order, no judgment. You see. But it comes back to bite you in the ass. See, that's how things are set up here. There's always judgment. There's always law and order, especially in the third dimension. It always comes back to bite you. Now, when you've reached that level of the fourth dimension and you are in alignment with Amun, then judgment disappears because then you become the judge. There's no judgment on you because you are the judge, because you've raised to such a higher standard, a higher state, that you become part of the judgment and the judge. But y'all ain't there yet. You haven't gotten out. A lot of y'all still dealing with your, your, uh, uh, your um, loving ways, meaning you have love for the three-dimensional things of this world. A lot of y'all still dealing with your loving ways. A lot of you still have your lunar Luciferian uh, 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 panistic, uh, Satanist ways. Especially you so-called black women, the ones of you that want to hold on to this world. You black men too, because you got that effeminized spirit, that moon spirit. A lot of you black males got that moon spirit. That pan spirit. That's why a lot of you niggas embrace pan-Africanism. All them Shango gods and my Orishas and all that faggot shit. Raw and uncut. But that's just how it's coming out tonight. And it, don't put this, this ain't definitely ain't going on YouTube. It's definitely going to get cut out. You see, all that weirdo shit. All that off shit. 
I ain't holding my tongue tonight. Let me get just let me get a little raw tonight. All right. That's just how it's coming out. Curse you niggas out when it comes to because it says you know and it, it's talking about cursing out all these things and bringing these things to, out to out to the forefront, man. All this stuff coming out to the forefront, man. And like I said, sides are being chosen, man. Those who are going to be with be with uh, Amen, with the Most High, the True Most High. Those who are going to be with the True Lord, Amen, and those who are going to be with Pan, man. Sides are being chosen. That's the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. The mark of Pan. And a lot of you, a lot of you so-called black people, are going to be with the mark of Pan, man. And so you're going to be with the mark of the beast, which is Pan. And the only the elect going to be with the mark of Amen, man. The elect. That's what it's going to break down to. And it's coming to that now. You see, the so-called black people, they love the gods of this world, man. They love pain. The so-called black people love pain. And this is why pain, like I said, pain going to keep abusing you niggas. Because the white man loved pain, too. He loved pain, and, and, and you love pain. That's why y'all always going to be in alignment. That's why it's always going to be black Christians, white Christians, black Muslims, white Muslims. It's always going to be that. Y'all always going to be in there because, again... Your, your participation in these religions means that you're following the god Pan, the moon god. That's why you Muslims have the star and the crescent, the crescent and your, and your flag. That's why you Israelites, you, your, your Sabbath, your, your uh, Sabbath days, right? or your Saturn days, you know, your panistic Saturn days and your high holy days are based on, lunar, on the lunar calendar. Y'all don't even know y'all worshiping Pan, man. Y'all don't even know it. Because y'all been Christianized. The minute you became Christianized, you started worshiping Pan. God is the God. Pan is the God of Christianity. He's Christ. Christ is Pan. You see? And again, like I said, it don't matter to tell y'all that because again, y'all so deeply entrenched in it. Y'all think that y'all y'all um double minded ways, especially like you black women, you think that your double minded ways, your indecisiveness, your uh uh uh, uh bored mentality, I'm bored of this, I'm bored of that. What's not, y'all think that's really coming from y'all. But in all actuality it's coming from that pan frequency. That's really coming from the pan frequency. See, because the pan frequency takes hold of you young black women at an early age. And you young black men, but heavily on you young black women because it comes to you through vanity. It comes to you through vanity because the very first thing that you're taught is that you're really nothing unless you are attractive to a man. That's why y'all go and y'all trying to make sure y'all get to a certain age. You're trying to attract boys. You're trying to make sure your breasts look a certain way, your butt look a certain way. You're saying you want to wear certain clothes. You want to attract men. You see? You want to attract men. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but when all of your energy is put into that, that you start to, to, to value or devalue yourself based on that physical things, then you have reached onto the side of pain. You fall in love with these things. You start having an attachment or an affinity for these things, these material things. You see, you start getting caught up in that. The long hair on your damn head. You see, that, see, you can start to get caught up in that. You get opened up into that world of pansexuality. A lot of you bronze women, you get opened up into that world of pansexuality. You slick or you screwing all kinds of different men. By the time you get to your damn 20s, you got you in the double digits of men you don't slept with. You see? Because that's pain. That's pain. That's pain in the minds of a lot of you so-called black men and black women. That's that pain energy. And a lot of y'all, y'all don't want to hear this because you embrace pain. You've been taught to embrace pan. And you will continue a lot of you to embrace pan. We'll be right back. We'll take a quick break. Now ask yourself a question. Why would you have a society that is based in law and order, right? And you have a court system that says in God we trust that is based on judgment Right, from one man, 12 jurors. Right, some mouth, number 12. 12 jurors who tell you, who decide, who get to decide the fate of somebody. 
Now, why would you have that? You don't tell these people, oh, judge them, forgive them, and let them go. You tell them that they got to judge whatever this person did, whatever acts or things they did, you know, whatever they did, they have to judge this, and they have to decide whether they're going to lock this person up for the rest of their life, put them to death, or let them go free. They don't say, oh, you know, let these people go, forgive these people. They don't say that for what they do. So why do they teach one God in the court system and another God inside of religion? Why do they do that? Why do they teach a God of love and religion and a Lord of judgment in, in the court system? Right? Why do they do that? Answer, because they want a degenerate society. They want a society full of degeneracy because a society full of degeneracy will always be or have to have a law and order in, in place in some way, shape, or form. In other words, if you have a society full of decent people who follow a, a lord or a, a, create, a, a most high power that is based in judgment and you're taught that for everything that you do, you're going to be punished for or you're going to be judged by the most high, then nine times out of ten, that would cut down on people committing crimes, girls out here prostituting themselves, men out here being homosexual or women being lesbians or most of the degeneracy or stealing and selling drugs. So all of that cuts down on a lot of the degeneracy. If you teach that, that cuts down on that. Because a lot of these people who, are, who participate in crime they do it as a form of degeneracy because they don't think there's no judgment coming behind it. But, but they want you to think that. Like, I'm going to tell you why people commit crime in the society because they don't think there's no consequences. People commit crime hoping they don't get caught or don't think they're going to get caught or whatever the case may be. They don't think about the consequences because they're raised in a society where everything is all love. You see, when you raise in a society where God is love, and God accepts any and everything, and God loves everybody, in your mind, mentally, you could do whatever you want in the world. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So then when you go out here in the world, and I prove it to you, that's how the mind of people work, especially you so-called black people. You go out here in the world and you say, you, you don't think nothing you do is wrong, because in your mind, God is all love. Right? You don't think that nothing you do is wrong because in your mind, God is all love. And there is no judgment from God. Right? Until you get in the court system of the white man, then he shows you judgment. Right? You don't think that, or you're taught and lied to that God is love, a.k.a. Pan, who you don't know is Pan, is all love. So you think that whatever you do comes with no judgment, no consequences. So you do the things you do. You see? You don't think about nothing coming back to you for what you just did. No law, no order is established in your mind because there is a law and order for everything you do. There is a judgment for everything you do. You see, there is a judgment because this society, this planet, everything is based on judgment. There's never going to be a time where there is no judgment. All that, there's no judgment and everything is all love. That's an illusion. That's an illusion of the three-dimensional world. And that's not real in the three-dimensional world because the white man, he, don't, he ain't part of that illusion. The ones who run this government, they're not a part of that illusion that everything is all love. They don't run their state government on everything is all love from a loving God. They don't do that. That's when they had that whole separation of the church and the state because really what they were doing was at one point in time, church and state were together. That's why you had to say the pledge of the pledge of allegiance, or you made prayer in, in school. Remember, you used to pray to God in school and did your pledge of allegiance and all this other stuff. Because that's when they said, you know, church and state was one. Now they say it was separate. So now, if church and state is separate, you got two separate gods now. You got two separate gods. You see. You got that God of judgment or that Lord of judgment in the, in the, in the uh, court. And you got that God of love and religion. And, and this whole world is based on religion. This whole three-dimensional world is based on religion. Right? It's all based on religion. So if you're growing up being raised that God is love, a.k.a. Pan, then you don't have any responsibility for what you just did. You don't think nothing is wrong in what you did. Like a good example of when I said the thing about um, 
what's the little boy that got shot? Um, he had the gun in the park, and um, you know his his mother let him go to the park and play with the gun. Trey, uh, um, not Tavon Martin, uh, uh, Tamir Rice. Now, like I said, they blame the police officer for shooting them, and that was right. He was the blame for it, but they don't blame the black woman for letting her son go out there holding a gun, playing around with a gun. She don't think she's to blame in none of that because God is all love. There's no judgment. Things just happen. It's not her fault. She don't want to think of it that way, that she shouldn't have had a big-ass 12-year-old son out there playing with a damn gun that looked like a real gun. He shouldn't be playing with guns, period. He shouldn't be, un- he should be watched. He shouldn't be unsupervised. You see, because you can look at the boys, see like he was off. Like a lot of you young black boys are, they off. They full of damn candy and damn welfare food and garbage from the damn Chinese store. They they bugged out of their mind. They, they're they walking around, he's 12 years old, big ass 12 year old, playing 12, a big ass 12 year old playing with a, uh, with a, um, with a, a, a gun to look real. What you think going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? But y'all don't think like that because it's all love. Probably was like, oh, well, he begging me for a, for a toy gun, so let me give it to him because I want to show him my love. I want him to love me. I want, I want to appease him. See? That's one of the defects of this love nonsense. That's one of the defects of this. Because you start talking stupid. You know, you give in to your children. Because you want your children to love you. And then you don't want to discipline your damn children no more. You don't want to judge them. As you should. And you don't want to punish them. Because now you believe in this love BS. Everything is all love. You see? And then it starts you out catering to them. Not punishing them. Not teaching them. You, then you start teaching them this nonsense about a God is all love. You know, God loves everybody. Then your daughter, it's okay for your daughter to bring home a caveman. Or your daughter to bring home another woman. Or your son to bring home a man. That's okay then. You see? Because they taught you to be like that. That's why Tamir Rice's mother don't feel no kind of responsibility for what happened. She don't feel like she needs to be judged for that. For allowing her son to go out there holding a gun. Well, that was her judgment. That was her judgment. Her son received her judgment. That's what that was. Her son received the judgment through his mother. And she's going she to pay, she got the paper. That's probably why she probably don't even want to think about it. Because she probably don't have a flash in her mind, which probably came from on high. Well, damn, if I didn't have him out there playing with the gun in the park, he would probably still be alive. Duh. Duh. But, like I said, all that trickles down when you teach that about this God of love where you could have children with no, no father out of wedlock and you could just screw and do whatever you want. See, all that trickles down. You see, all that trickles down. You see? You see, all that trickles down. You can do all these things. You see? You see, you can do all these things under that God of love. You see, you sacrifice your children in the name of love. Exactly. Real love, real love is based on judgment. Exactly. Tough love. That's real love. You see, that's real love. See, they, this is not taught amongst black people. This is not taught amongst black people. Black people want to do as thy will. That's why y'all don't come together. That's why y'all hate on each other. That's why you cater to the lowest part of yourself because that's how you want to do. You do as thy will. That's how you feel. Do what you feel. Just to allow yourself to inhabit those kind of feelings shows the mental illness in you. That you would even worship or cater to the lower part of yourself. To cater to the lower part of yourself, like a lot of you so-called black females, you cater to the whore in yourself. A lot of you celebrate being whores and sluts. You celebrate sneaking around, jumping in bed with um, niggas and being cavalier about your vagina. You, you cavalier about it, you black females. You sneak around, get your freak on, have a bunch of niggas. You sleep with niggas just because you feel like it. Oh, I, you know, I'm horny. I, you, you act like men. 
But and, and when you're doing it in the mind to the doing it, you don't think nothing's wrong with it. It's all love. I could do what I want. I'm a goddess, and God is doing it. And then when you're pregnant or you got a goddamn disease, you see, then all of a sudden that's consequence. Or you got that whore, that whorish energy on you. You got the energy of a bunch of a, a bunch of uh, degenerate niggas on you. Then you sitting around here wondering why no real man want to deal with you. Because see, when it don't, when when you women do that, when you go out here and you get liberated with your vagina under the God pan, when you get liberated with your vagina, when you got a bunch of boyfriends or just boyfriends that you going from this um, penis to that penis to that penis, when you doing that, like I said, that's you opening yourself up to that pan God, man, that love God, that sex love God, man. Sex don't mean shit no more. It's just you just screw. It don't mean nothing. Now, with a man, that's one thing. A man, a man will be like that. Men will use women for that. But for you women to be like that with yourselves, real women, nah. That's that pan love. That's that pan. That panastic love. That's the love of, uh, oh, I want to be free. I want to be free to be a degenerate. That's what free really means. Without judgment, I want to be free without judgment to be a degenerate if I want to. If I want to sit, because that's what niggas really mean when they say they want to be free. They want to be free of judgment. If I want to steal, I want to steal. If I want to screw and make babies and don't take care of them, I want to be free not to go to child support court. I want to be free. I don't want no judgment. But then the white man hits your ass at judgment. And see, that's a, that's a, um, that's a mark from the Lord to let you know that judgment is still around. He used the beast to do that. All right, so let me go ahead and read these questions for you guys. Does the world follow? We're going to close out in the name of Amen by the power of Amen. And Amen we trust and Amen we think and Amen we continue forward. we we'll read what we got to get before we get out of here. Does the world follow a judgmental Lord or a loving God? A loving God. A loving God. The loving God of pan. The pansexual, the one who accepts everything. The one where there's no law, there's no order, there's no judgment. That's the God they got y'all following. And I don't care if you sisters don't, you black sisters don't believe in the mother goddess or Orisha or the African Zulu woman or the witch doctor or the tarot card. That's all pan. All of it is pan. The free energy, that's pan. Who is the uh, loving God of this world? Pan. Look up pan. Baffle met pan. It's all the same thing. Half man, half animal, because what they teach you is why they push you as a half God, half animal, because they want you to cater to a lower side. They want you to tap into an animal side of yourself, which is really not yourself. It's the, it's the side, it's from the beast, but they want you to tap into their bestial energy. That's why you, a lot of you black women do it when you lay down with those white men. You tap it into his bestial energy and you get all connected into that bestial energy and you start worshiping that God pain and you got you committing bestiality. Because you know deep down in your mind that something ain't right when y'all do that. A lot of y'all know that, but y'all ignore that. You see? Who is the judgmental Lord? Amen is the judgmental Lord. Amen is the judgmental Lord. And Amen's raising the elect in these last days and times to be the real judges of the next world. That's happening. And hey, Amen ain't going to be no goddamn loving God, man. Who is, uh, who, which one should um, the world be following? Well, it ain't going to matter. The world going to be following Amen regardless. That's coming. You see? What does uh, this mean in the future? It means law and order, strict law and order as it should be going forward. That's the only way you're going to get the best, best, and the brightest. And that's it. We're going to close out in the name of Amen by the power of Amen and Amen we trust and Amen we thank. And Amen we continue forward forever. I am the intellectual new Ben Mencari. This has been Intellect Radio. Good night. If it's hell, I'm in, then it's hell us. They tried everything just to spell us. Fed us religion, gave us fake gods Through all of that, we beat the odds Now we coming together under one flag Colors red, gold and blue Superman, superwoman, that's me and you The infinite capabilities that 